Hi, it's The Wire. It is May 13th, 2024. Keeping it free.blogspot.com, a free site. Also, wealthspinning.blogspot.com, a free site. Nothing I say in this video should be construed as investment advice. I want everyone to think for themselves. I want everyone to go with their own due diligence, what the markets tell them. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, there are many, and I'm one of them now, who believe that we're going to have higher for longer interest rates. Now, here I need to pivot. I need for people to understand that there are some very reputable people out there. Gary Schilling is one of them who believes that we're actually headed for deflation. Right? The argument is that demand is softening, the consumer is over-levered, uh, demand is dropping, prices are too high, people are buying less, the economy is slowing down, there'll be reversion to the mean on things like the Buffett indicator. Right? And, of course, Schilling believes that that's going to be deflationary. I believe that the government, unfortunately, is tone deaf, always has been, is going to see crises and is going to realize that they are going to have to print money. I don't believe the Federal Reserve is immune from the political winds. Right? So, there are financial problems that we, quite frankly, in this election year here in the United States, aren't even acknowledging. For example, the pension crisis. Folks, here in California, we're so busy finally acknowledging the multi-billion dollar state debt that people haven't even been able to talk about the pension liability the state of California faces. You have crises right now in places like the state of Kentucky, Illinois, we can't even talk about that because we're so blinded by the fact that there is a greater than $34 trillion federal debt. Right? Understand you have many pension beneficiaries who are going to be shortchanged. Right? If they don't give you less in terms of the number of dollars that you're owed, that you were promised, understand they're going to give you less in terms of the purchasing power of the watered-down dollars you receive. Right? The pension crisis isn't even acknowledged right now. When it is, you know the response of government. They're going to print more dollars. They're going to water down the value of the dollar. I would also question government numbers. Right? What exactly is a job? <clears throat> If I'm delivering food from restaurants, courtesy of the DoorDash or Uber app, is that a job? Right? I would argue that by traditional metrics, the jobless numbers are very high. Shadow Stats has the unemployment rate north of 20% right now. Right? I believe we're getting fed a steady diet of misinformation because politicians want votes this election year. Sooner or later, we're going to have to deal with the actual underemployment and unemployment of fellow Americans. Right, folks? Food prices are high because the water has been watered down. You can afford less today. Does anyone remember when fast food was actually cheaper than traditional restaurants? Where parents trying to feed their families went to places like McDonald's and were able to provide their families with, you know, burgers that had real meat in them. 
right? Think about what's happening right now. In the state of California, we've lost any idea of the concept of an entry-level job. So now you work in McDonald's, they've decided that it's better that fewer people, I'm not kidding, fewer people have jobs at McDonald's, right? When you raise the minimum wage for fast food work to $20 an hour, people get let go, right? The owner of the McDonald's is limited by the income they take in. People get let go. Then, of course, when you artificially raise the minimum wage of fast food workers in the state, understand prices go up. Some families will no longer be able to buy food at McDonald's. It no longer makes sense. The parent who thought, you know what, I don't want to slave over a hot stove or oven. Let me just go to McDonald's to get a cheap filling meal for the kids. They're back to slaving over a hot stove or oven because McDonald's costs too much. Let me just tell you my own story. I have a couple of cars. I neglected them. They're both in the shop. So I decided, okay, why don't I just use DoorDash? Right, I have a DoorDash pass. I said, let me use DoorDash. Let me have food delivered to me. Right? I decided I'd buy about $7 worth of food at McDonald's. DoorDash then advised me, even with my DoorDash pass membership, that it would cost me $18 for the meal if I had it delivered to my house. Right? I would be paying the small meal fee in addition to of course driver fees and costs 18 bucks for a meal that if i walked into the restaurant would cost me less than 10 right there were other wrinkles it was a two for one breakfast sandwich deal but just understand that's the world we live in now right so of course Prospective voters understand inflation is much worse than they're telling us because many of you have had similar experiences. Many of you have been in the store, not a McDonald's, but let's say in a grocery store. And you're looking at the price of milk and you're saying, wow, this is more expensive than I remember. You're looking at the frozen pizza, which used to be a lot cheaper than what they were selling at Domino's, and you're saying, wow, you know, DiGiorno is going here at $7 a pie? You know, what happened to the savings that I used to get by actually buying frozen pizza? Let me also say, too, there's another elephant in the room, commercial real estate. You understand that the financing of commercial real estate is heavy, on interest only loans right it's heavy on rollovers the financing isn't a 30-year traditional mortgage where you're paying down principal no it's often far less than that where the understanding is hey your business at this location at this high-rise has been successful uh, we're five years in you need to roll it over well, rolling over the financing is tough when interest rates have jumped and when many people in the market are expecting higher rates for longer periods of time. Peter Zion is here on YouTube talking about higher rates for years. Right? Not six months. No, years. And so understand what's happening in the commercial real estate space. Let's say a business has a lot of workers who used to work at cubicles in the office. Now, of course, they're working at home on their own laptops, right? Using Zoom, etc. right? They're working from home because, of course, they need to care for their kids themselves. They can no longer afford that full-time nanny. 
So you're using less office space. Now you have to refinance at higher costs while you're using less space. So you have a lot of these commercial real estate tenants saying, that's it, I'm out. I'm giving back this space to the owner. I'm no longer renting this space. I'm either moving the business to Florida to save a lot of money, right? Isn't that what several people have done? Didn't Jeff Bezos move to Florida recently, right? You have a lot of wealthy people saying, hey, let me change my business model, right? You have a lot of people giving back the keys saying, hey, I'm not going to extend my lease, right? It's yours. You know, you have a full-blown crisis. Who ends up holding the bag? Folks, it's often the bank. Right? Because you have owners saying, hey, you know what? We're no longer going to own this property. Because when we bought this commercial real estate building, we thought it would be packed. We did not anticipate how COVID would lead to a rise in work from home and how that would change the foundational economics of being in the commercial real estate business. Right? So just understand, I don't think we're prepared for not just the pension crisis, not just increasing unemployment or at least the realization that we have elevated unemployment right what are they telling you that the unemployment rates around four percent or less you know your neighbors do you believe that for a second you think the jobs that your parents generation had are commensurate with the doordash gig economy we have now aren't you driving your own car to deliver the DoorDash restaurant food to the customers, right? So I believe we have a lot of problems and I believe the people in government aren't experts, right? We want to believe that they somehow have some special insight and stuff like that when time and time again, they've proven us wrong, right? I can tell you in the state of California, I wonder how many people were able to survive in real estate when you had laws put in place during the pandemic where you couldn't evict non-paying tenants. Right? I don't, I don't understand what people are thinking when they come up with social distancing rules based on nothing, right? Even Fosse now admits that the scientific basis behind this wear a mask, stay six feet away from the person next to you, wasn't firm. But yet, we ran with that here in California as it killed restaurant after restaurant after restaurant. Understand, restaurants have a high failure rate in good times. You suddenly start saddling restaurants with these social distancing rules and stuff like that. And the few survivors that exist out there that took time to build their brand, to actually build a client base, right? They started folding. So the people in government, all I can say is, it's a mistake. When you see these photogenic people who give good speeches, reading teleprompters, to suddenly feel that that connotes, that that conveys expertise. That's a mistake. Right? So understand, with the coming realization that we're more unemployed than we think, that the numbers are juiced, you're also going to have the realization that a lot of white-collar voter uh, workers have been laid off from places like Google. Let me point out too that there used to be a culture in Silicon Valley, right? Do no evil. 
It was, hey, you come work for us. We'll take care of you. Just show up on time. Just do your job. Just give us your best effort. Folks, that culture is gone now. You have companies like Tesla. Didn't Tesla used to be one of these cause type employers? You thought, hey, this is a new type of company. Um, we're making money. Uh, you know, we're here early. We're going to keep our jobs. Now we're finding out that Elon Musk, whether you're a great worker or a bad worker, is eliminating entire work groups. Right, Elon Musk is just coming in and saying, hey, my vision has changed. We no longer need this department. Right? You may have never missed a day of work for years. If you're in that department, you're losing your job like everyone else. So, let's just talk about the fallout from higher for longer interest rates. First, uh, folks, it's going to hurt housing. Right? For a few reasons. Let's talk about them. Now, if you live in Vancouver, if you live in Toronto, you understand that there are many people buying second and third homes for investment purposes. Folks, they're not even airbnb them. They're just buying the house. You might live in a neighborhood where several of the homes are vacant. Because, of course, the owner just wants the investment value of the house. They don't want to actually deal with tenant upkeep. They don't want to rent it out. Broken windows cost money to replace. The expenses are more controlled if I can just own the house and just have it sit vacant. But understand, housing is a leveraged market, right? People aren't paying cash for the home. Some are, but they're few and far between. Most people are borrowing money. They're taking out mortgages. So when the borrowing cost increases, it hurts a leveraged market like housing where people are borrowing money to buy the homes. Now let me just say, the higher rates for longer is a boon for crypto. Now I'm not going to get too deep in the weeds here because I have a crypto substack page that does have a free member layer. It's Dwyer, D-W-Y-E-R, 70905 at substack.com. Again, it's Dwyer, 70905 at substack.com. It does have a free member layer. I hope you give it a look. But understand, the higher rates for longer is a boon for crypto as you don't need to borrow money to buy Bitcoin. Understand, Bitcoin is what Michael Saylor calls perfect collateral. Right? The supply of Bitcoin is immune from the whims of politicians once Bitcoin is legalized. Right? In theory, the politicians can say, hey, we're going to suddenly outlaw Bitcoin. But I believe once the genie's out the bottle, once you have powerful institutional investors and people like BlackRock backing the technology, I don't think you can put the genie back in the bottle. Right? You have billionaires like Mark Cuban talking about how Joe Biden is blowing it by not being more open to Bitcoin, by not calling off SEC Chairman Gary Gensler. In other words, you have billionaires who are backing the technology. Right? The horse, as they say, is out the barn. Now, unlike a house where you look at a house and you say, man, I love this house, but I can't afford it. Um, is it possible that I can buy a bedroom in this house or I could buy a bathroom, right? We'll talk about proportional ownership a little bit later. Just understand, because Bitcoin is digital, 
you can look at a Bitcoin and say, wow, it's going off at over $61,000 a coin. I don't have $61,000. Rather than do the housing thing, which is to go to a bank and say, lend me $61,000. I'll make a down payment. Here's my credit score. Right? Rather than do that, in the digital world, you can say, you know what? I have $500. Let me buy $500 of Bitcoin. Right, folks? It's divisible. You don't have to take out a loan to get Bitcoin exposure. Right? If you don't have $500, you can buy $100 worth of Bitcoin. Or Ethereum. Or a deflationary altcoin. With a limited supply. Let me also say, too, that divisibility also applies to things like Ethereum and Solana. Understand too, if interest rates are going to be higher for longer, that's going to create an active lending market. Right? Understand that's going to be huge for crypto that's in the decentralized finance lending world. In other words, Ethereum, Solana, countless other DeFi cryptos. Again, I'm not going to get into detail in this video. Right? Let me also point out, too, that the minute you get to rising rates, private money is going to come in off the sideline to suddenly start lending you that money if you promise them high rates in return, right? One of the stories of the last 40 years is the emergence of private equity, right? It's private money looking for a rate of return. You don't think hedge funds are going to be involved? You don't think private investors aren't going to pool together their money and say, hey, let's lend money to debtors who look credible. Folks, if they want anonymity, you have something called the DeFi world and crypto. In other words, I can get involved with DeFi protocols and I can make over collateralized loans to people I consider to be worthy borrowers. It's a win win, right? They get to borrow money. I get the collateral. If they don't pay, I keep the collateral. Not only that, I save my reputation. Rather than be the evil bank foreclosing on the, you know, sympathetic homeowner. Instead, I'm anonymous. I'm the anonymous uh, lender. Lending through a protocol, the DeFi protocol. The DeFi ecosystem in crypto. Right? And of course, things don't go right. In the real world, I have to publicly announce that I'm foreclosing on the home. Right? Foreclosed homes are all over the internet. In the DeFi world, I don't have to do that, do I? Right? It's a collateralized debt. You don't pay, I just keep the collateral. That collateral, in many cases, is cryptocurrency that over time is sound money compared to fiat currency. Let's think it through. Understand too, rising rates mean more profit in the lending world, right? Let me also say too, that rising rates in dollar denominated debt will have borrowers looking for other currencies, which comparatively speaking, would be sound compared to the dollar denominated debt. You understand that dollar denominated debt is fiat currency debt. Right? Let me also make a point here. It's going to be a glorious time for passive investing. It's very important here. Language is very important because I understand there's a group out there saying, hey, passive investing, let's look at it carefully. This is a bad idea, John Bogle. 
Uh, Vanguard was wrong. Uh, passive investing distorts the market. Right? You've heard that. You need to look a little bit deeper on what they're talking about. Language here in this space is very important. By passive investing, I do not mean investing in an ETF that mirrors a stock index. Right, folks? That's just one form of passive investing. Right? If you've invested in anything, let's say Bitcoin, and it's appreciated in value, and you haven't had to do any additional work for the profits, right? You've just invested and it's risen in value. Your net worth has, ri has risen. You haven't gotten an employee ID number. You haven't had to park in employee parking. You haven't had to go to an office and wait for a payday. No, you're not even an employee. You're an investor. And your investment is generating a rate of return. Right, folks? We're up on an era where passive investing is going to take off. Right? Understand, I mean investing in sound money that appreciates in value. Right? Take a dollar out of your pocket and look at it and ask yourself, when's the last time this appreciated in value? Folks, it's been a long time. By contrast, gold, silver, Bitcoin, Ethereum, they're up big, aren't they? Right? I'm just telling you they're not up as big as they're going to be. Let me also say, too, you're also going to be able to invest in fractional ownership of assets. So, let's get back to the earlier example I gave. You're looking at a house. You're saying, man, I like the neighborhood. Man, I like this house. Wow, you don't even have to know what you're doing as a landlord to rent out this house, to get income from renters. But you think to yourself, you know, this house and this great neighborhood costs over a million dollars. I don't have a million dollars. I'm out of the market. Not so fast. Jeff Bezos is backing an outfit called Arrived. Please Google it, right? Understand with Arrived, you can now buy fractionally real estate, just like you would buy stock, right? So investors are sniffing out houses and they're saying, hey, let's pool our money. Let's each own a share of this house, right? Just understand, because of the move toward digital money that is divisible, and because of the smart contracts in Ethereum, in Solana, right? Just understand that you can now own a piece of hotels. Right? Let's say there's a hotel in a location. I'm not talking about having a share of Hilton Corporation. No, I'm talking about, you know, a privately held hotel can say, hey, let's sell to investors. And you can buy a piece of that hotel and automatically get payouts because you're holding a smart contract digital asset that's programmed to pay out the profits. Well, you can own fractionally parts of hotels, homes, artwork, farmland, right? Food's going to be Sorry, a big issue. I'm not able to conduct local searches right now. Please try again later. You see, I'm living in a digital household. Uh, farmland, food's going to be an issue. Farms are vast. People like Bill Gates own a lot of farmland. Well, you can get in now on deals where you can, with other investors, own your little piece of farmland. Right? Just understand that the digital world and smart contracts make a lot of things possible. 
Now let me close, I see I'm at 30 minutes, I apologize for the long length. Let me close by discussing some areas I think have an advantage in this investment environment. Now please remember this is not investment advice. I want everyone to do their own due diligence. Right? Let me just say, how do we solve AI? Right? Just understand it's you know, a growing field, it's growing by leaps and bounds. You might not like the multiples that NVIDIA is trading at right now. Uh, you might be nervous anytime a uh, corporation has a uh, market cap north of a trillion dollars, right? What I want people to understand, and this is an ongoing theme here in my videos, is that one way to invest in AI is to invest in energy. Understand the energy demands that have popped up over the last 15 years. Right? You have AI. That's an energy drain. Right? AI uses a lot of energy. You have electric vehicles. Ditto. You have cryptocurrency. Ditto. They're all energy intensive. Now understand, before the emergence of all this, we were having blackouts a few years ago here in California. Right? PG&E had problems. Right? The electric grid needs to be updated. Understand, too, we went through at least a couple of generations where you had people like Jane Fonda and Jack Lemmon in movies that you know, scared viewers to death about nuclear energy, right? We were hearing about Three Mile Island, and, you know, you thought, hey, who could trust this new technology? We equated nuclear energy with Hiroshima, Nagasaki, hydrogen bombs, right? Well, just understand, now our energy needs and the fact that windmills and solar energy aren't enough, Right? The fact that we can now sniff out politicians who are talking about green energy and we realize that they don't know what they're talking about. That green energy is supplementary. It can't be primary, at least given our current level of technology. Right? Well, understand, we're getting back to what we need. Nuclear energy. Right? We understand these energy demands need to be answered. You can't have AI without having an energy source that these semiconductors can run off. So, one way to play AI is by investing in nuclear energy. Right? Cameco. The symbol is CCJ. BWX Technologies. They create modular nuclear reactors. Uh, BWXT, right? Sprott, physical uranium. I'm just telling you what I like. Please do your own independent research. SRUUF, right? Sprott, uranium miners ETF. The symbol is URNM. Energy fuels, which is interesting because the share price is less than $7. Right, so if you're a risk taker, if you're in the world of options and stuff like that, this is the kind of low share price that you can work with. The symbol is UUUU. -U -U. Right, let me just say too in terms of AI, understand the phenomenon is global. Right, understand for national security reasons. Many countries want their own homegrown AI companies, right? They don't want to rely on foreign-based corporations. So right now you have a unique situation in China involving Alibaba. The symbol is B-A-B-A. -A. In my opinion, the stock is selling cheap. They're involved in AI. It's a stunning bargain 
especially given the fact that China has the world's second largest economy. Right? A lot of people with a lot of AI needs. Understand, too, the incumbents are king in AI. Right? I wish I could find some, you know, small company that owns a big piece of AI. What I found, though, is that AI is too capital intensive for that. So the major players are people like Google. Understand, too, Google really has to emphasize AI because Google's advantage in search has now been eviscerated by AI. Right? OpenAI is announcing that they have search features that can match Google. Right? Of course, an investor in OpenAI is Microsoft, right? Another company you need to think about. Uh, you have Llama Technology being unveiled by Meta, another company with a sizable presence in the space. Um, all of them have to expand beyond their core competency because they understand the threat AI poses to whatever prior advantage they had. Right? Amazon, another company in the space that you need to think about. And so uh, Meta's symbol is META, Microsoft's is MSFT, Amazon's is AMZN. If you're a risk taker, I would encourage you to look up some of these ETFs that promise two times the return on an Amazon. Um, you know, that's if you're a risk taker. If you are like me and you want to set it and forget it, you want to buy the actual stock itself. Those are my thoughts today on May 13th, 2024. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. For more detailed discussion on cryptocurrency, I invite you to become a Substack member of my crypto page. It's dwire70905.substack.com. You'll be surprised how cheap it is for paid members. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.